All right, are you ready for a little story? So once upon a time, well, okay, this is my made up story. <laughs> once upon a time, there was a group of people, you know, several families that all lived together in a community and they uh, would go down, this is way back like cave person time, right? They go down to the water and they wash their clothes and they wash themselves and, and they frolic and play and swim around in the water, right? And you just see this sort of um, living on the land kind of culture and way of being and swimming and fishing and um, the outdoor natural world is all a part of their life. So one day, this family of people, community of people, one of the people said, hey, who do you think could swim over there the fastest or could get over there the fastest? Maybe they didn't use the word swimming even, but who could get over there the fastest? And there was a bunch of them that said, oh yeah, yeah, me, 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 let's go. And they all like took off and went over to that rock. And somebody got there first. And then everybody looked at that person and said, oh, they really know how they're doing, what they're doing. And this is how we started getting swimming instruction. <laughs> because people looked at that person, that fastest person and said, I want to be like them. And so they started copying that person. Now they all could swim beforehand, right? They were all in the water, living as, with part of the water, frolicking and playing, being safe, enjoying the water, the shallows and the deep. But it was that piece of making it into this race for the fun of it, that really is what starts to develop swimming as a sport. And you start to really then hone in on this. And maybe you could say from there on out, people started looking at that one person and copying them. And then that person told the next person, if you want to swim, you got to do what that fast person did. And so on and so on and so on. And the reason why I tell this story is because that first person, that fastest person, that is still what we do today. We look at our Olympic athletes and we see whoever wins in those races, we look at what they're doing and over time they do things differently. So there used to be a time when it, all the instruction was like swimming with really big straight arms. Well, then somebody started, uh, was faster and they had high elbows. So then all the, there was all these drills about dragging your fingertips and having high elbows. <laughs> and then that has changed. Now it's more like this wing over the water, right? It develops over time as you watch whoever is the fastest. Now, why is this important? This is an important tell and an uh, important story for you to know because as a beginner swimmer, we're looking at that fastest person and most instruction is filtered down to try and make us towards that fastest person. What it misses though, is the foundation that has to come before all of that. Remember all the people in the community, they were just doing their thing, enjoying the water, being safe and playing and diving down for fish or diving down for rocks or something. And, playing around and enjoying the water. That is what has to come first, that understanding of the water. Now, I introduced this article is about the difference between freestyle and front crawl. And it really comes from this story because the event, one of the Olympic events is freestyle. And you are free to swim whatever style you would like. So you can go in and swim anything you want. <laughs> you got to go from the distance and you have to start the, the blocks and all that kind of stuff, but you're free to swim whatever style you want. So if you look at what is swam in that event over time, I love there's this, uh, there was a program, watch the, um, 
show called The Midwife. And on one of the episodes, one of the nuns was super excited about watching on TV. This is the days where they all crowded around to watch the one TV. She was super excited to watch the Olympics because there was an athlete from their country, from England, who was going in the swimming competition. And she was saying, this is the freestyle race. And they showed a little clip of it. And they were all swimming in this kind of fashion, <laughs> which is today we know more as breaststroke to come this way. It must have been at that time, whenever that setting was, that was the fastest way to go, the fastest way that people knew to go. So when they were free to swim whatever style they wanted, they were swimming this way. Over time, somebody started crawling, doing the front crawl faster than this one. So that is why we see in the freestyle races today, you see the crawl stroke, the front crawl swam in those events. So that's how they've become synonymous. So when people talk about the freestyle or people talk about the front crawl or the crawl stroke, they usually are talking about the same thing. And this is why, because it's just looking, that freestyle is looking at what is the fastest thing that's out there. Now, what's important for the beginner swimmer, <laughs> right? Because most of the people who are listening to this beginner swimmer, why do I need to know the difference? And it's this piece, it's back to this foundational piece. You first have to know what your freestyle is. You need to be free to swim your style. And your style is whatever it is of how your body and the water work together, how you are connected and at ease. This are, these are the things that make us efficient in the water. Urgh, plowing through whatever way you're doing it <laughs> doesn't bring efficiency. It's when we have the calm curiosity to be able to push on the water in whichever direction that you're gonna push and to have your energy go right into the pushing and not into the whole rest of your body. <laughs> that are just, again, using it like our Olympic athletes, our fastest runners in the world. All of their energy goes to going straight. None of it goes to their faces. Their faces are like <laughs> jelly, right? So that they have all their energy going to going super fast. Even if you're not wanting to go super fast, you're not wanting to tire yourself. You're wanting to be efficient with what you're doing. So we need to find that freestyle within you. It starts with how do I create the emotions that I need within me to learn to the emotions like curiosity and fun, right? I have to feel safe first. Safety comes from me. And I have to feel curious and fun to be able to understand how my body and the water work together to build that efficiency, to build my swim. And then once I have that firm foundation, I can say, okay, how can I get faster? How can I use the tips and tricks of other people who are, um, who've been doing it for a long time to improve what I'm doing, to hone what I'm doing, but we can't start there. We have to start with the foundation. If you want a quick head over to our website, we have our, um, our, little free course in there will teach you about the ways of how you start to develop that emotional mindset that you need to be able to discover the swimmer in you, to be able to transform your story from a non-swimmer, from the person's just there at the shore washing the clothes to the swimmer part. Jump on over and uh, take the little free 30 minute course and start transforming your story. And so you can really become your own free swimmer. Have fun.